Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Apple stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Apple is a technology company headquartered in Cupertino, California. It designs, develops, and sells consumer electronics, computer software, and online services. It is one of the big five IT companies in the United States, along with Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Facebook. Its products include the iPhone, iPad, Mac personal computer, iPod, Apple Watch, Apple TV, AirPods, and much more. This is the largest company in the world in terms of market cap. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 2.2 trillion market cap. They're trading at 128 a share and they have 16.7 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you forecast the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has positive and healthy free cash flow each year, 50 billion to 73 billion. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have really strong net income, 48 billion to 57 billion a year. And their revenue grew from 229 billion to 274 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Below that is gross profit, and their gross profit was the highest in 2020, $105 billion. Below that is operating expenses, $39 billion, and they had $66 billion of operating income. And the bottom line of the income statement is the net income. Their net profit margins are over 20% a year. To calculate net profit margin, it's net income divided by revenue, and that was 21% in 2020. In each of these four years, their net income margin was 21 to 22%. So they're doing a really good job converting revenue into income. This is their statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's the cash they generate through their operational business. And then capital expenditures. This is investments in property, plant, and equipment. And to calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. They had the highest free cash flow in 2020, $73 billion. You can see the company has been repurchasing a lot of stock, $32 billion in 2017, $72 billion in 2018, $67 billion in 2019, and $72 billion in 2020. There are two ways for a company to give back to its shareholders. You either pay a dividend or you buy back stock. Apple does pay a small dividend, but it looks like they're buying back a lot of stock. They seem to be issuing a lot of debt, $28 billion in 2017. In 2018, they issued $7 billion, but repaid $6.5 billion of debt. When you combine 2019 and 2020, it looks like they issued a similar amount of debt as they paid off. And let's look at their operating cash flow. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, which was $57 billion. Then you add back the non-cash items. So they had $11 billion of depreciation and $6.8 billion of stock-based compensation. You also have to adjust for changes in working capital, and that was $5.7 billion. So their operational business generated $81 billion of cash. That's a lot of cash. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $65 billion of equity, $112 billion of debt. That seems like a lot of debt, but when you look at their net debt, that's only $21 billion. They have over $90 billion of cash on their balance sheet. So even though they have a lot of debt, if they have enough cash on their balance sheet to pay it off, it's not too much of a concern. And their interest rate is 2.5%, the cost of debt is 2.2%, and they have 63% debt, 37% equity, cost of equity is 12.3%, and their beta is 1.3%, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market. And their WAC is 5.9%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 1.5 trillion. We discounted those numbers back to today's new weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.5 trillion. We divide that by 16.7 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $90. They're trading at 128. So they're trading at a 43% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little lower than me, they're $81 a share. 
So you can see the stock price has only gone up the past five years. There was a little dip at this point right here, but it looks like it's coming right back up. It's almost at its all time high. The company has been increasing their dividend over the years. They went from 13 cents to 14, to 16, to 18. Now they're at 21 cents and they pay a 0.64% dividend yield. Their payout ratio is 24%. They use the rest of the money to either reinvest in their business to grow it or buy back stock. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $130,000 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have $116,000 today. The company's stock price has increased 84% in the past 52 weeks. That's better than the S&P 500, which increased 16% in the same time frame. The 52-week low was $53, and the high was $138. The stock price is in an uptrend since it's trading above its 50-day moving average and 200-day moving average. And the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average. When the 50-day crosses the 200-day, that's a golden cross. That's a bullish sign. A really liquid stock is one that has a volume of 20 million shares a day. Their volume is 100 million shares a day. And almost all the shares outstanding are on float. And nearly 60% of the stock is held by institutions, and less than 1% is shorted. The company was founded in 1976 by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne. In 1977, the company was incorporated without one of the founding members. Ronald Wayne sold his share of the partnership for $800. Between 1977 and 1980, sales went from less than $1 million to $118 million. You could spend hours talking about the history of Apple, but that's just how it started. The company is listed on many exchanges, US, Mexico, Germany, Great Britain, and many more. Vanguard is a top shareholder at 7.5%, then BlackRock at 6.3%, Berkshire Hathaway at 5.5%, then State Street, FMR, and Geode. The average age of the leadership team is 56 years, and the average tenure is three and a half years. Tim Cook is a CEO. He's been at the company more than nine years in a compensation package of $11.5 million. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12, and the median is 14.3. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 37.5. So investors are paying $37.50 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price of a sales per share. They're at 7.9, so they're a little worse than the average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 33, so much worse than the median and average. The way you calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity, and they have a whopping 88%, so they provide a great return to their equity holders. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.4, so they have a great current ratio. And their current assets are $90 billion of cash, $37 billion of receivables, and $11 billion of other. And they're well capitalized. Their free cash flow in 2020 was $73 billion, and they have $38 billion of working capital. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.